Welcome, welcome to the best five minute wine podcast. I'm your host, Forrest Kelly. From the seed to the glass, wine has a past. Our aim at the best five minute wine podcast is to look for adventure at wineries around the globe. After all, great minds think alike. Let's start the adventure. Our featured winery is. As we conclude our interview with Patrick of Table Mountain Winery in Wyoming, what would you like our podcast listeners to know, Patrick? Well, I think uh, maybe the only thing through your education, your podcast, just the difference of cold hardy hybrids versus, you know, your Merlots and your Cabernets. Basically how they took the wild branches of Native American grapes and the University of Minnesota took that test on themselves, breeding them with vinifera. And so we do have some grapes that are a direct descendant of Pinot Noir and Cabernet and some of that heritage, but they do have a lot of wild heritage to them. And that's a challenge in marketing some of these grapes because people are not familiar with the name and people don't understand that there are many thousands, tens of thousands of grapes out there. And so we, we kind of market our wines more as a, you know, the cowboy reserve or the cowgirl blush, but then we do go into explaining how the different grapes are grown and, and tell the story of how some of those grapes came to be. Everything that it's taken to get the winery started and continuing to grow, what would you say that you're most proud of? Kind of a collaboration of everything. So I think at the end of the day, we're always just proud of the fact that we started taking a value-added ag product and we're still doing it. There's still 100% Wyoming grown and made and we still have carried that through and even just doing the labels in-house, doing it all. So I guess not to pick one out of any of them, but just probably proud of all of them in, in totality. Having so many different uh, grape varietals, have you done anything crazy with them? One of our craziest grapes that we grow, and we have two of them, one is the Valiant, which was one of the original cold hardy hybrids developed by, I think it came out of uh, South Dakota, but uh, it basically took wild grapes growing up in Montana Canada and along the riverbanks and started trying to breed that domestically. And so we do in the vineyard fight with the wild aspects, if you will, of the grapes because they don't grow like vinifera, they grow for survival. And so um, we're constantly pruning and sometimes the more you prune them, the angrier they get. So (laughs) the grapes themselves have a unique and different story on top of how we came to be too. Yeah, you've got a lot of different combinations of grapes and the merging of things together and the uh, experimentation process to make your wine. The University of Minnesota, I guess, is kind of the flagship. But in the 80s, they started a a grape research program inspired by a retired horticulturalist, Elmer Swenson. I think you could call him the grandfather of Midwest or the last chapter of grape growing in the U.S., but he was able to basically breed all these hybrids together and get grapes that started to produce. And then the University of Minnesota took a step further and really went next level and started introducing the Nifra, the European line, into some of these um, wild rootstock and, and coming up with hybrids that are able to survive our winters, grow and ripen in very short season and produce wine. Before we close out the episode, uh, just poking around your website, and uh, one of the last things that I found was paint night. Tell me about that. We were able to partner with a studio in one of the larger towns in Wyoming, Casper. Um, They were able to open up a paint company, but in Wyoming, liquor licenses are limited. And we as a winery have three that we can use throughout the state. So we basically opened up a tasting room in that city next to a paint studio. Um, to help them serve some thirsty customers. And as part of that, we fell into the paint franchise as well and started doing them here at the winery. And that was a very big boost because, again, we are in the middle of nowhere compared for most people's sakes. But even for locals, we are 20, 30 minutes out in the country. And so by being able to add some events such as the paint and sips on the weekends really has helped us bring people out to the winery our website is very simple. It's wyowine.com, wyowine.com in terms of Wyoming wine. Our socials are at wyowine on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those good ones. And then our phone number is 307-459-0233. The 2021 year coming out of COVID, we are actually planting a new vineyard despite us saying we would never plant another grape vine again. 
but we did have a few varieties that kind of entered there. I think it was the 2020 vineyard and a few varieties there just started at 20 years showing a lot more winter kill and we lost uh, some vines from different varieties. So we're actually planting a new vineyard this summer or spring and it will be with a grape called the Atasca, which is one of the newer hybrids that the University of Minnesota has released. So we're always excited about that. It takes three to four years to ever see the, the fruits of your labor, but we are excited about planting new grape and seeing what it can do here in Wyoming. Thank you for listening. I'm Forrest Kelly. This episode of the Best 5-Minute Wine Podcast was produced by IHISM. If you like the show, Please tell your friends and pets and subscribe. Until next time, pour the wine and ponder your next adventure.